Me personally, Skip, I think the release of Amari Cooper is looking worse and worse. When you Do look you at really? wow. when you look at what he's doing in Cleveland, I know. he he's uh he it. has the fifth most touchdowns, receiving touchdown for a wide receiver. He had, on, on the twentieth most catches, but he has fourteen point six yards per catch, which is better than CD. He has more touchdowns than CD, a high yards per catch than CD, and but he's. 26 receptions behind CD. Yep. Michael Gallup is, has four touchdowns, Noah Brown. So if you combine, if you look at the stats between Noah Brown and Michael Gallup, Amari Cooper is blowing those guys away by himself. So the question is, let's just say for the sake of argument, you run into a Green Bay or you run into the 49ers and their game plan is to take CD away like they took Justin Jefferson away. Then what do you do? Because you're right. Clearly, it, they felt that the progression that they had saw with James Washington in practice, yep. maybe with the combination that Jen mentioned with the emergence of uh, T.Y. Hilton, yep. they had seen enough from T.Y. to say, you know what, we can go forward without James Washington. Maybe what they saw in practice or what they saw in the game wasn't enough for them to keep, even though, Skip, he's on a bargain basement price. It's not like they gave him $10, 15000000 million. He's on a minimum, a minimum contract. Minimum contract for a guy, James Washington, might be 800000 to a $1 million. So for me, we're going to find out if Jerry Jones' decision in the offseason to relief, to uh, basically trade C.D. Lamb for, for peanuts will pay off. And that's what, that's what this, come, this is going to come down to, Skip. It was peanuts, too. <laughs> they just said, we want to get rid of you at, at any price. We'll just give you away. Right, because you saw what Claypool went for. You saw what some of these other... Uh, 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 and I'm not saying uh, Amari was, was uh, Tyreek, but you saw what he went for. So, but you saw some of the other tier receivers skip go for second and third round picks, and they basically gave uh, 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 Amari away for a fifth round pick. That is a fact. So for me, Skip. But by the way, Amari made twenty million dollars. Right. So that's what they got rid of. But they go got ahead. they got All rid right. of it. Okay. But you also got rid of that production. Yeah. I mean, eleven hundred yards, nine touchdowns on fourteen point six yards per catch. That's pretty good production. Considering that he's throwing, yeah. uh, Jacoby Brissett was throwing to him, and, uh, and and Deshaun hasn't got his rhythm quite back yet, although they did hook up a couple of times on Sunday. So for me, Skip, we're going to see if CD, because this is CD or bust, is good enough to carry you to a deep playoff run. We'll see if Jerry Jones' decision to trade Amari Cooper for a little mm. of nothing yep. will pay off for him come playoff time, because that's all that matters. That's all that matters. All that matters. We are about to see. <laughs> you can accuse me, if you so choose, of putting on my metallic blue-colored glasses today and seeing the world. You got the colors on. But you know what? I don't what? know if anybody I, can I see us. I, I must tell you, I was just looking across the table at yours, and I think I would prefer yours over mine today. <laughs> For once, I think you out blued me. And we got a, you got on gray slacks, I have on gray slacks. This you was got not a, planned. It was not planned. <laughs> okay. Back to my team. Okay. Back to my dilemma. Back to, let's start with James Washington. Okay. I loved James Washington when he was at Oklahoma State University, mm -hmm. a rival of the school that I grew up loving, University of Oklahoma. So I watched a lot of James Washington. Okay. And I really came to admire and like right. his weird deep speed because he had that kind of weird speed that didn't time that great, but he just ran past right. everybody he in did. college football. He won the Bolitnikoff Award <coughs> as the best receiver in college football. He did that. Just because he did not run 4-2, he dropped to the second round, but still a fairly yeah, high, a high pick, second round pick of the by a team that has been notoriously great at seeing and grabbing, nabbing receivers, right? Nobody picks positions. Nobody. Like the Steelers pick receivers. They, they just don't. It's just been one after. <laughs> now, they, they tend to flame out or go, go haywire on them yeah. or whatever. Yeah. A, B at the top right. of the list. But you know and I know they have just swung and hit, swung and hit, swung and hit. Deontay okay. Johnson and Pickens oh. look like. Oh, Pickens looks like he's <laughs> another really... one of those. Yes. He's another top yeah. ten-ish yes. type receiver. And James Washington got hurt in camp. It was some kind of Jones fracture or Liz Frank or I, I don't but know. But you did <clears> like <throat> the signing at the time. I loved it because okay. they stole him. And why he didn't work out with Ross, excuse me, Roethlisberger, I don't know. But they did not get ever quite on the same page. Right. Maybe he just wasn't quite good enough. I don't know, but I loved the pickup for him to be the third receiver because I was more bullish at that point on C.D. Lamb, who plays more like a lion than a lamb, yep. than you were at that point. Yep. So I said, I'm happy for him to emerge, to have the decks cleared 
where now you take over and it's your team and your time. Okay. And I basically believe he's done that. I'll get to that in a moment. Right. But I needed James Washington to be my three because I needed Michael Gallup to bounce back from his ACL and be a strong number two. And that didn't really happen right. because he's been fairly quiet all year, even though lately I'll see a catch here or there where I say, oh, there he is. There's <laughs> Michael Gallup of the last couple of years. Okay. So then out of the heavens, out of nowhere, just when I'm Odell or bust, I'm all about <laughs> Jerry. And Jerry Jerry went crazy for Odell. Right. Jerry fell in love with Odell Beckham Jr. and the concept of having Odell potentially get ready for a playoff run. Maybe if they could get to an NFC championship, uh -huh. maybe he'd be that. Maybe he'd even make it back for the first game <clears throat> when I kept hearing, no, he's, he's not even right. close. Mm -hmm. So Jerry went overboard as he's prone to do, and it went nowhere because Odell's saying, I, I just can't I commit have. this year. I'll, I'll go ahead and take your $1 million to rehab in Dallas, but I can't promise. And Jerry said, I need a, I need some kind of guarantee that, that I might have you down this trail. Right. No, no, no. And right. so they fell apart, and it's starting to feel like, even though Jerry says I haven't given up on this, it's starting to feel like Odell's never going to be a Dallas Cowboy, right. but I could be wrong. Well, about he's that. given up on it this year. He might yeah. revisit it in he, the offseason, but okay. it's over for right now. All right. And then now I should also add this. Along this year's trail, they had signed Cavante Turpin, who, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, was the MVP of the USFL, yes. right? Yes. Right here on Fox. Right. Well, he, he was the MVP for two reasons. But the first reason he was the MVP was because he was a dominating pass catcher. Right. The second reason was he was a dominating returner. So he Made the Pro Bowl as okay, a returner. Okay. So he did. But they signed him as both, I right. thought. Because if you're – listen, you can't be the, the MVP of a league full of quarterbacks who are all pretty to very good right. without being – an uncoverable receiver, right. right? It's hard to be a non-quarterback and win MVP. Most re most returners have fast twitch, and they're yeah. very good receivers. You look at the re you look at the returners, you look at the Edelman, you look at the Wilkins, you look at the guys that okay. return the ball. All right, they were good. So, so help me out. I keep waiting and waiting for Cavante it, to catch on, so to speak, mm -hmm. as a receiver. Uh, he's gotten two targets all year. He caught one for nine yards. Right. Period. End of story. Right. Well, I don't know what happened. I thought, well, will they work him into the offense as a, you know, sort of... Maybe a gadget guy. Some kind of gadgety. So he's had three carries, all sort of revert, you know, speed. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. Jet, jet, jet sweeps. speeds. Yeah. Okay, three for 17. Okay, with a long of 11. It, it, I can't even remember what they were because they either. came and went. Right. Okay? So he has been next to no factor on offense. All right, now back to the question. Out of the sky when I least expected it, fell a 33-year-old receiver off his couch, a receiver nobody wanted for the whole football season right. until two weeks were left, three right. weeks were left. Right. And nobody wanted him all last offseason. Nobody no. bit on T.Y. Hilton. Right. Who obviously made, what was it, four Pro Bowls? Made four Pro Bowls, yeah. yeah. After and he had five 1,000-yard receive, uh, receiving seasons in Indy. And he was a big-time yeah, receiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was legit. 13 couple uh, 1300 yards 1200 yard receiving seasons I got to tell you maybe maybe I'm overreacting maybe I'm just desperately clinging to one little shred of hope here he has been a godsend with the third he, and 30 well it's been all, I, I'm going to show them to you because okay. I just had our okay. great staff Research. pull them out okay because he is a technician of a route runner. He is the highest IQ at receiver, and he has convinced the coaching staff and, more importantly, my quarterback, that he can be trusted yeah. under fire yeah. in the biggest moments yeah. because he will be right exactly where Dak expects him to be, and he will catch the football with, with clutchness hanging in yeah. the balance. Yeah. When, when it's time to make a huge catch, he makes huge catches. Now, he's caught five so far in two games for 102 yards, but four of the five went for first downs. And if we can start back. What about that see. first time he got on the pass interference on yeah. Slay? Okay, well, that's, you count that first, that's about where that, we're going to go. Big okay, let's start there. Okay. Let's start okay. with that play. Okay. This is a fourth and three play against, I'm sorry, fourth and eight play, not fourth and three, fourth and eight. And they have the conviction to throw it to 
new number 16 on this out route on, you could argue, the best cornerback in performance yeah. this year so far, right? Yep. And he gets an illegal contact. And Slay, to, to his credit, he just threw up his hands like, you got me. You, you, you fooled me, and I had no choice but to latch on, right? right? Okay, so that's fourth and eight at the at the Philly 45. Well, it was a pretty big early play. Yeah. That's that's early in the second quarter right. of the Philly game, obviously. And then the play you bring up, which might be the play of the year. It just might be, I don't know anyone bigger. This is with eight minutes left in the Philly game. Still game hanging in the balance. It's third and 30. From and the I think you're down at that point, Skip. Yeah, I believe we were down. So third and 30, it was Dak's best throw of the year. And just as Maybe important... Cover. Just as important, as you know better than anybody, it's not that easy to catch that Hell ball. No. It's not that easy. And he had to go down to his knees to just make sure he hung and, and, and wrapped it. It looked like it. he started to lose his balance yeah, right before he, the ball he, got he there. He did. It, it's a hard catch. It's a hard throw. It was a great play. It was the signature moment you could argue of the season because that was a you big make, game to win, even though it was Gardner Minshew. It's still a big game for my team to say, okay, we're okay. Well, you, you right. would have no chance at the division had you lost no, that game. You would have they no, would have sold no it shot. up with that and, win. And also, you might be reeling. If, right. if you lose it, then right. I don't know, do you, can you get back up in time mm -hmm. for Thursday night, even right. though it was Joshua Dobbs at Tennessee? I don't know. I kept telling you, my fear is they're going to lose to Philadelphia, lose to, at Tennessee, and then lose at arch rival Washington. Because that would have been back-to-back -back losses. Remember, you were coming in that game after you had lost to Jacksonville. Okay. So now, speaking of Tennessee, we go to Tennessee. And would you believe I'm going to show you three straight third down plays in what was a way too close game, obviously, that sort of hung in the balance in right. the fourth quarter. But the first one's a third and five play. This is 742 left in the first quarter. Third and five from the Tennessee 37-yard uh, line. Uh, and he goes to guess who? Well, well this is third and five. It's, it's a big deal early in that game to set the tone. Is there not trust there? Yeah. Do your eyes not tell you, oh, Dak, he likes him. Right. Okay? He, he's going to go to him when the chips are down. I don't and, know what that DB is thinking. Well, you see you see him pause. Remember so he's not going, he's not running a go route, son. Drive that. Okay, remember, they're playing back. Okay, okay. okay. You, you're I, right. I, I don't even know Man, I totally was. forgot. You're right. Okay, you're right. They, you're they right. Were. My bad. Okay. I apologize. I'm afraid he's he's like beneath <laughs> your criticism. Okay, you're right. All right. So then we got the next one's another third and three at the Dallas 39. This is 923 of the second quarter. And let's see this one. This is third and three. So it's it's still nice a key play. Yeah, it's just a nice slant where he goes inside instead of outside. And Dak Truss, I'm going to throw it to you because I believe you're going to catch this. Yeah. It's not Noah Brown because I never know quite sure. Noah Brown can make big catches, and you know he can make bobbled up pick six interception plays, right? Yeah. Okay, so then there's one more. Th this is late in the third quarter. Game is still sort of hanging in the balance. It's a third and ten from the 25. Third and tw ten now. Third and ten. Dak had had a rocky second quarter, and he – flips it to 16, who gets loose, and, and ends up going for 28 yards on this play. Okay? I'm not saying he should have made the Pro Bowl off two games, but... No, 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 but, no. But, but that's what you get him for, Skip. You get a guy like T.Y. Hilton, you know you're bringing him in for a short period of time. He's there to give you a few plays a game, and if he can do that, it's, va it's very valuable. He's giving you those plays. He got a pass interference that kept a drive alive that led to points, and the third and 30. Yeah. Because if you, I'm not so sure, Skip, if you don't pick up that third and 30, I don't believe you win that game. I, don't, I believe Philly's going to look at where Philly's going to get the ball. Stoner, I don't either. Third and 30? Third and 30. As you well know, <laughs> the psychological damage you do to the defense, yeah. because you know what they're saying in the huddle, like, oh, God. They know, that, and, and I tweeted that, I said, it's yeah. over. Cool. Because normally on third and 30, what do you see teams do, Skip? They just dump it down, punt the ball, and live to see another day. But give the I Cowboys I don't know the credit. math on it, but the, the it statistics good. on it have to oh, be it's less, like. Oh, it's less than 10%. percent got to be. Uh, Maybe less than 5%. I might go lower than that. Okay. On third and 30 yeah, in yeah. the history of your league converted, <laughs> it's just, it, it's virtually I think it's impossible. Like, yeah, like eight, eight, for, eight for something. Okay. I mean, we're, we're not talking about a pass interference or anything no. like that. All we're right. talking about a completion or a run. Okay. Now back to my guy, C.D. Lamb. You once turned him, excuse me, termed him C.D. Dam mm -hmm. because he deserved it at that point <laughs> because he was dropping too many balls. Yes. And he came and he went, yeah. and he came and he went. And all of a sudden... Here he comes. But you remember what was the turning point. What did Jerry Jones say? 
Jerry said that's he the did. number one. We need you to make those plays. He did. he did. He called them out a little bit, and like he, sort of through the back door. And he took off after that. Last three games, this is C.D. Lamb at Jacksonville. Obviously, they lost in overtime, but they were ahead 27 to 10 late in the third quarter. Right. He caught seven balls in that game for 126, and I told you the next day, well, at least there's a bright spot. Right. Seven for 126 mm -hmm. against Philly. He got 11 targets. He caught 10 of those for 120. Right. Okay, and, the, and two big touchdowns Correct. in that game. Okay, I'll take that. Yes. That's a pretty big-time mm -hmm. performance. And then at Tennessee, he gets 14 targets. So here's the targets. They go seven at Jacksonville, 11 at Philly, I mean, versus Philly, and 14 at Tennessee. So you can see what Dak's doing. 32 in three games, so basically okay. 11 targets, a little over 11, 11 targets a game. Okay, they're going seven to 11 to 14. So either... Dak or Kellen Moore or somebody is saying, you know what, we're going to feed the beast over there. Well, Skip, that's the guy that can, that can produce okay. the yards and produce the touchdowns. It's almost like what Brady finally did with Mike Evans. Yeah. He said, you know, heck yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. Like, the, he's the guy. W they hadn't had a touchdown pass together for 11 games. 11 games. Yep. So he just said, I'm just going to start throwing to him, and yeah. surely something good will happen. Right. And it started to. CeeDee Lamb, I believe, has emerged – to be what I thought he was, which is a top 10 receiver, because over the last three games, he is tops in targets and catches in the National Football League over those three games. Right. Well, they're the three games for me because right. they're setting the table right. for what could come. He has emerged as a guy that I trust a little bit more than I ever trusted Amari Cooper. You know what I thought of Amari? He changed Dak's life for a while in, down the stretch of 2018 because Dak would not have the contract he has oh, no. right now without Amari Cooper's yeah. assistance. Right. Right? Right. Everything changed overnight. Yeah, Remember, they're three and five, mm -hmm. and he walks in. He, he did play in the game that they fell right. to five, the, the but, but, night, but he wasn't, he'd barely been there. Three and five, they take off. They go the next week and win at Philadelphia, and then it just boom, 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 and they end up winning a home playoff game before they lost to the Rams out here, but they took off right. because of Amari Cooper's presence. Right. Well, it took a first-round pick to get him out of John right. Gruden to, to Dallas, right. but he had been a high first-round right. pick yeah. for the Raiders. Top five, I think if I'm not okay. mistaken, he was a top-five pick. All right, and he's made a couple of Pro Bowls. So if I'm hearing you correctly, yep. you believe the Cowboys' receiving core are good enough to make a deep playoff run? I do, because he has emerged. I still see glimpses of Ghost Gallup. I see glimpses okay. here and there, because he still can make – Make big touchdown catches. If you ignore him. He make the circus catch, but it's does. the routine that he'll they, they'll okay. throw it right to him and he'll like bobble it. Well, drop it. Lately they haven't been throwing to him right. very much because his targets are going down. Well he had one target one game, I think he had yeah. one target. Yeah, I wrote down all his targets. But you're you're right. It's it's not yeah, he had one at Jacksonville. Okay. He had one target. Um he caught one ball for two yards. Right. For two yards? Okay, that was at Jacksonville. All right. This brings me to why am I bullish? Dalton Schultz is pretty good. He's mm -hmm. not Shannon Sharp. Yeah. He'll never make – I, I, don't, I don't think he'll make a Pro Bowl. I, don't think I mean, either. maybe I should – maybe I'd eat those words, but I don't think he will. Right. There's, there's too many better ones. But, <laughs> but he's a pretty good one. Right. And more important, he is Dak's favorite target. I agree with that. All right? I do have that going for me. The two kids you like fairly well – And Deshaun Jake, Ferguson? Yes. Jake Ferguson's pre – he's pretty good. Mm -hmm. He was, I think, a third-round pick, but Peyton Hendershot out of Indiana was completely undrafted, and he's made a couple of nice catches. Yeah. He also has dropped a couple. Yes. But the point is, the threesome at tight end, also his blockers are pretty good. That's a whole other issue. But, but the point is, I'm okay with the, the threesome at tight end. Okay. They're credible to me. Okay. Brings me to the other huge X factor. Tony Pollard has emerged as a very quiet, unsung star to me. Because I, I say it again, I don't know who he is. If he came and sat down here, I'm not sure I'd know who he was unless he had his jersey are you on. Not, are you concerned about the thigh bruise? You believe he'll no, be 100% by the time? He's, they said he's going to play this week. Okay. So, so I'll see. Okay. But, Nothing to he, worry about there then. I, I, I hope not. All I know is this. At Memphis, I kept telling you when they drafted him, he played more receiver than running yeah. back. He was their slot. They threw him a ton of footballs, and all of a sudden this year, they're throwing him a ton of footballs because he's got 39 career-high catches. Yeah. He is average per catch almost 10 yards. It's 9.5. That leads all running backs in yards per right. catch with 35 or more. Right. He's a weapon. Mm -hmm. 
he, he's becoming a quiet force. So I include him in the <laughs> receiving <laughs> okay. core, okay. okay? Because they do throw him a lot of passes. Right. And I think he's incredibly dangerous because, as you know, he's a home run hitter. Yeah. If you get him loose, he will go. So you included the tight ends and 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 Pollard yep. into that receiver saying I, I you do. believe that with the depth that you okay. have at those positions, you're good. So I am completely satisfied okay. with the addition of T.Y. Hilton that I have quite enough firepower here to make a deep playoff run. I don't miss Amari like you're missing or say they should miss Amari because there were too many road games when he didn't show up. C.D. will show up. He's been showing games. up now. He, did okay, you not I see know. the game in Washington? Okay, but will he change their life? I don't think no, he No, no, no. You didn't need him to change your life. You just needed him to give you this kind of production. If, because what you need, if somebody neutralized... Let me ask you a question. If they neutralize C.D., yep. and all of a sudden C.D. can only get 36 yards or 50 yards, you believe Gallup, Noah Brown, and T.Y. Hilton can put you over the top. I haven't even mentioned no except in a like a negative context. So I'm <laughs> no. I'm not trusting. He do, he I'm, do I'm have three touchdowns. He got three touchdowns. Okay, he does. He, he's actually weirdly better with Cooper Rush because they seem to be scout yeah. team Because I think he got two touchdowns. Did he have two touchdowns against Jacksonville? He did. Okay. Okay. But then he has the big drop, and your question the next day is, why are you going to Noah Brown yeah. on third and four or whatever <laughs> exactly. it was, right? Okay. And, and Dak made a nice throw on that ball. I mean, that wasn't his fault. So the point is this. I trust CeeDee Lamb to be a little, I'm not going to say a lot, but a little better than Amari Cooper. Okay. So that gives me a little better chance of going farther than I used to have. And I am already trusting T.Y. Hilton to be my number two receiver, not wow. my number three, my wow. number two. And and if you told me the day he was signed, because with James Washington, all I needed was a three. Right. T.Y. Hilton is clearly better than than James Washington ever thought about being. Uh, dang, right? you're you demoting uh, 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 Gallup, huh? Well, he... <laughs> He, he's just always there, and, and he's dangerous because he's capable because right. we've seen it before, but I don't need him to be great. I need T.Y. to be almost like a 1A to C.D., and I think he is capable because I, I know he, he used to do it. He used to be a clear well, number he was, one. Well, he was number one in Indy, yeah. Yeah, okay. So do you like what you see from T.Y. Hilton? Because I, I can't not like it. I, I, I'm sorry, but I just can't have the confidence that in the Cowboys receiving core outside of CD like you do. Okay. Well, to your point, when the chips get pushed to the middle and if it's going to be at Bucks, Todd Bowles is going to say, uh, we're taking 88 right. away from you. Yeah, because right? Carlton Davis will probably miss this game. Yeah, so I to make so. sure he's healthy. Yeah. And Carlton Davis probably will travel with CD. And then they'll well, Maybe Jamel and, Dean. I mean, they like Jamel Dean because he's long. long and he's and, fast. You're right. And so, Skip, when you play with a long corner, you have to be a little bit more per perfect because he is so the length okay. that he can bat down balls with his long arms and he can but make what, a what I'm saying is Mike Edwards is going to be right there lurking and Antoine Winfield is yeah. going to be right there lurking and it's going to be two on one. Well, they're probably what they will do is put CD in the slot and try to get they try. Winfield Jr. Yes, which they've been trying to do. Right. But if Carlton Davis is back, I don't think you'll see Murphy bunting more as the, in the slot. slot. Correct. Okay, but what they've been doing great with CD is Moving. motion, motion, right. motion, motion. Right. Identify and then let him get a break on somebody where he's in. He's moving right. before they can get going. I'm okay. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. We're about, we're about to guess it's what? All about we'll find out next week. We're about to find, <laughs> we're gonna find out. out next week. Are we? <laughs> Go find out. It's going to be good. Playoff time, my favorite time of the year. Yes. Guys, in other Cowboy notes, a shout out to Demarcus Ware and Darren Woodson, finalists. Yeah, for yeah D. Ware, Hall. let's go. Come Hall on, Woody. Of fame this year. Woody. <laughs> Lots of guys overdue. Yeah. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Subscribe here to get the very latest from Skip and Shannon. Plus, go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.